based on you know your industry connections, the work that you're doing, what is the situation in the Central West Bank right now for the technology industry? Thank you, Ed, for having me here. Uh, so when, when, whenever we are talking about tech uh, as we are living in the West Bank, uh, we cannot ignore that Palestinians are living under surveillance states where uh, different uh, kinds of surveillance technologies have been uh, developed and tested on Palestinians in an open laboratory uh, in the occupied Palestinian territory in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Um, and to state but not like this is not limited to, we are talking about uh, CCTV cameras, facial recognition technologies, spywares, malwares, uh, uh, technologies such as Blue Wolf, White Wolf, uh, and as well as Red Wolf, drones, among other uh, various technologies that have been developed by the Israeli government and the Israeli companies, testing that on Palestinians before selling that worldwide to preference from that and unfortunately sometimes major tech companies are investing in um, in such companies in such uh, surveillance companies to develop certain technologies as it happened um, like a couple of years ago with uh, Microsoft that tried to invest uh, 75 million dollars in Anivision which is an Israeli company to develop facial recognition technique uh, testing that on Palestinians before they start selling that worldwide that like was one, part of that yeah, go ahead sorry no i'm sorry to interrupt you Mona. i mean one reason we we've asked you onto the program is your expertise in cybersecurity and emerging technologies that's some of the work that you do at the mei based on what you just outlined to us as what you think is happening how operational are technology startups in the west bank has their day-to-day -day an ability to do business, whether they're a software-focused company or a hardware-focused company, been impacted? Well, whenever we are talking about tech industries in the West Bank, it's different than the tech industry uh, industries in Israel because I've started talking about cyber, uh, cyber technologies like uh, surveillance technologies that have been used. None of those technologies are basically developed or developed by Palestinians or in the Palestinian territory. All of those technologies are developed by Israeli tech, uh, companies. Uh, as far as I can remember, there are 28 uh, uh, surveillance companies in Israel, eight out of them are led by ex-military people in Israel. And uh, like this could give us like a clear example on how <clears throat> this is a military state, even if those, <clears throat> sorry, even if those technological companies are developing that, it's also connected with the uh, military expertise for their executives or se senior executives in so many cases. When it comes to the West Bank, uh, like the whole uh, startups scene is different. It's more about services. We've seen like delivery companies, e-shopping companies, among other kinds of companies that are more about service, not exactly about uh, developing technologies such as like the surveillance technologies, as I mentioned, whether it's hardware or software. Uh, Mona, you, you name-checked and mentioned Microsoft. Uh, we will reach out to Microsoft for comment on that issue of cybersecurity surveillance in the region. Bear with me. I want to bring our audience another story which broke on Wednesday morning, and that is the European Union writing to Mark Zuckerberg, the chief executive officer of Meta, and asking the company, Meta, parent of Facebook, of course, to look into disinformation around the situation in Israel uh, and, and what is happening on the ground. You'll remember as well, uh, Mona, that the EU and Thierry Breton had already written to Elon Musk and asked X to explain what it is doing in fighting disinformation. Some of your research and your background is in social media. What role is social media playing there from the West Bank perspective, we have reported on this program that on multiple platforms, there are videos that are sharing, being shared on those platforms purporting to show one thing when in fact they are showing another. But what role broadly is social media playing here? So social media platforms are reflecting what's happening on the ground. As soon as the escalations on the ground are starting, we can witness more activism on social media platforms as well as more hate speech, incitement, uh, violent speech, as well as 
uh, misinformation and propaganda speech on the social media platforms. In the current situation, we can clearly see an increase in hate speech, violent speech, and incitement against Palestinians on the social media platforms. And unfortunately, social media platforms are not investing enough resources to prevent uh, to prevent spreading such in, uh, such speech, and they are relying on the limited resources civil society organizations to monitor that and escalate that to them, which basically contribute to, to the real world harm that Palestinians are exposed to. Now, while we are speaking, while I'm speaking with you, there are Israeli settlers who are based in the illegal settlements in the West Bank are attacking some Palestinians in some cities. And earlier this yes. year, they were burning certain cities such as Huwara based on this incitement and hate, hate, hate speech on the social media platforms. And Bloomberg has not verified the incidents that, that you just outlined. What I would just say, and we showed it a moment ago, we sh can show it again, is that ex's CEO, Linda Yaccarino, sent a memo to the entire company overnight saying, we are reminded of our consequential responsibility to protect the public conversation uh, and an action that shows uh, that, that they are, are looking into this and taking it seriously. Mona, finally, I, I want to ask you this question that's been debated on this program by technology industry participants uh, in Israel, uh, in the West Bank, elsewhere. And it's the, the, the sort of symbiosis between Israeli tech and Palestinian tech. In other words, they're very closely tied. Is that something that you recognize, that they actually act as a much broader but single industry. Yes, of course, because Israel see in the Palestinian workers as cheap labor for them. So they could sometimes subcontract their certain works for Palestinians. And as you know, like with the limited uh, with the limited uh, uh, working opportunities for Palestinian young people, as well as with the limited also access to the e-payment services, which basically affect Palestinians from accessing to the international market. For example, Pay PayPal is not operating for Palestinians who are living in the West Bank, neither in the nor in Gaza Strip. So as a result of that, Palestinians are not even allowed or able to work as a freelancers and then get, get paid by, by PayPal. As a result of that, they are forced sometimes to do subcontracting work for Israeli companies uh, who are like who are working on whether software or hardware uh, technologies. But this is, again, we can't see this uh, uh, separately from the, the, the situation, for, from the political economic situation that Palestinians are living under and from the power asymmetry relationship between the Israelis and Palestinians in this region.